Hi friends, in this video, I am going to explain to you how you can use generative fill to remove distractions and improve your photos and also give it a painterly look in case it is not working out. As a photo, you can give it a painterly look to be able to actually share with your friends and family a photograph which you took. Now this photo which you see right in front of a tiger, she is named Riddhi and uh, you find this tiger in Ranthambur, where I was doing a safari. So on first day in the afternoon, we were out on a safari and uh, the guide took us to a point where he said that the tiger is hiding and towards the evening it may come out. And it happened. After about half an hour of wait, the tiger started moving in front of us. But unfortunately for us, she was moving behind trees and obstacles, as you can see. And it was very difficult to get a clear shot. And she was also quite far off from us. But slowly, she started moving and meandered towards us. And we started taking shots. But we were not getting very clear shot of this uh, tiger. Subsequently, we did. But this one I liked because the whole tiger was in the frame along with the tail. And it was a quite majestic sort of a walk and look which she had. The eyes were quite... Uh, prominent, so I thought of working on this image further to improve it. So my process is that first of all, I bring that image into camera raw, I develop it, and then I take it to Photoshop and further refine that, which I shall be covering in this video. You know, first thing which I do is I, I like to reframe uh, by cropping. So go down here to crop tool. And we are going to use rule of thirds and we are going to, yeah, that this looks okay to me. This crop looks okay to me and click on it. So there we have it and uh, it's, it's a, quite a clear picture. It has got a lot of detail. So that is why I want to work on this further. Now, having done this, we are going to improve the exposure. For that, normally I click on auto and it has done a good job as it thinks. So we go to the light panel and I'm going to reduce the highlights a bit and I'm going to open up the shadows. You see, another thing about this place was that the canopy on top of the trees was quite dense and therefore very less light was coming in. So this, as you can see, has, has been clicked at ISO 6400 at the maximum end, that is 900 mm in APS-C terms, and the aperture was f8 and at 1 by 500 second. Now, this kind of a shutter speed is required if you want to freeze motion, and we should do that, because now there are tools which help us to clear noise. So I am going to be having developed it and tweaked it a bit, going to go down to detail, and here we have this option of denoise. So we're going to click on this. And it has worked and cleaned up a bit at 20. You can increase it to, let us say, about 25. Because beyond that, we are going to lose detail. And we are going to click on enhance. Camera raw takes a bit of time. And uh, it is going to clean up your image to quite an extent, but it is also going to eat into a bit of detail. I can see that it has removed a bit of noise and uh, the image is now looking much cleaner. Now, having done that, nothing further in Camera Raw, I'm going to take this image to Photoshop and work there. So click on Open. And now we are in Photoshop. So friends, as you can see, the tiger is quite prominent and clear but we have a distraction and that is a log in front of her and Photoshop can take care of it because it has got certain generative fill tools which is based on artificial intelligence. To do that take this lasso tool and select this particular log go slowly on top of it Now, having selected this, we are going to go to edit and we are going to click on 
generative fill and click on this. Now you get this kind of a dialog box. Do not enter anything here, just click on generate so that the application can have a go at it. So click on generate. And it will take a bit of time, so don't worry. And there, it has reconstructed the image and we have uh, something which now does not have you know, the distraction in terms of that log has now been removed. And I am quite okay with it because now I have a full tile in front of me. So what can we do next to improve this? Uh, normally when you have a tiger walking, you want more space in front so that, uh, you know, a bit of negative space for better composition. Now I want to flatten this layer first and I want to resize this to... say, 3840. Having done that, I'm going to bring this image to the center or somewhere there. And again, click on this uh, crop tool. They select it. And we are going to increase the area towards the front. I think this should be good enough, a bit more, that should be fine. And you have to ensure that the fill is generative expand. And let's now double click on this. You get this kind of a dialog box, just click on generate. And let's see what the computer does. I think this looks quite good, but you have three options. You can check on it, whichever is, uh, looks good to you, go for that. I am personally liking the second one, so I'm going to select that and leave it at that. So we have now an image, which is a very workable image, and we can work on it further, and, you know, we can just share it as it is. But I find a bit of noise still, so we'll deal with it a bit later. Before that, we are going to enhance this image a bit further. For that, I'm going to flatten the layer, I'm going to duplicate the layer by pressing Command and J since I'm working on a Mac. We are going to go to image and we are going to auto tone it. Let's see what we get. So see, auto tone has judged the brightness and color and it is brought to a level which to me is now looking pretty good. And the tiger's image now is uh, shareable. You can share it as it is. So we are going to further go to curves and, you know, from here presets, I'm going to select linear contrast. This is going to improve the contrast a bit and I'm going to leave it at that. Now you will notice that the light was coming from the back of the tiger or the side of the tiger. So the body is well lit, but the face is slightly darker. So I am going to be using this Adjustment brush tool, click on it. We'll flatten the layer first, then duplicate the layer and take this and now work on it. So we have this curve selected, so this is using that adjustment here also. And see now the tiger's face is much better. You can, if you want to reduce the brightness or increase the brightness using the curve tool. I am going to leave it at this, or rather reduce to this much to balance it out. So there we have it. I think it's looking quite good to me, and uh, if you want, you can sharpen it more, but I'm going to leave it at that. You can work with you know the, the, this background a bit, by, but for this particular thing, I'm going to leave it as it is. So to give it a bit of more contrasty look, we could also, you know, do something. That is, we can go to the curves layer and give it a S curve, you know. And this, I think, is making a lot of difference compared to earlier one. There, this is looking a bit flat, but now we have a bit of color and contrast improvement coming in. So this is looking pretty good and we can share it as it is, but I want to also explain to you how you can give it a painterly look and uh, then it would be 
you know, good for taking a print out and putting it on your wall. We are going to go to layers, flatten the image. You're going to press Command and J to duplicate the layer. And what I want to do is select this and mask it. For that, we are going to go to select and we're going to click on edit in quick mask mode. Now you can't see the mask there. So when we have selected in quick mask mode, this layer is now colored in sort of a pinkish maroonish color. That means this layer is selected, though we cannot see those matching ants which indicate that the object has been selected. Not to worry about that. Now we are going to go to edit, then go down here to fill. And the fill content should be color. You know, it could be foreground color, background, anything. But let's say it is foreground. You change it to color. And in the color picker, you must ensure that your HS is 0, 0. B can be anything which you give. I have selected 20% because I want the effect to be quite subtle. But if you want it to be more prominent, you can increase it. And then R, G, and B will get adjusted on its own. So let's leave this to default, and we are going to click on OK. And click here on OK. Now this whole thing is appearing to be selected, so we are going to go down to Select, and we'll again click on this. In the background, the selection is already there. Now this procedure, the way I've explained to you, go through that step by step. And then only you'll get the kind of result which we'll be getting a bit later. Now we can go down to edit and we click on generative fill. And in this dialog box, we can type in, let's make it painting and generate. And we now have this particular thing coming up, which the application has suggested to us. There are options. You click on it. And I think this, to me, appears to be more sensible. Or you can regenerate. So let's regenerate. Actually, this one looks OK to me. So we are going to select this. And to make it more lifelike, what we are going to do is we are going to reduce the opacity. So we don't want 100% what the computer has given us. Let's bring it down to, let's say, 50%. To get a more lifelike look, I'm going to bring it down to, let's say, 20%. Yeah, this looks okay to me. So now we have a painterly look. And the benefit of doing this is, firstly, you have got something which you can put on your wall. Plus, in case there was any kind of noise still left, because we had shot it at very high ISO, then that noise is going to get smudged out you know, by doing this particular thing. And let's now flatten this image. And I want the eyes a bit brighter for that. Take the dodge tool, uh, reduce the size of the brush to fit the eye, and just click on it once. So the eye is now looking a bit brighter because it has been dodged out. And once again, we can take this um, curve tool and we can give it a S curve, make it a bit brighter, and there it is. So there it is. So friends, we took, you know, the image right from bridge. Uh, something, uh, you know, totally washed out, colorless image with a obstacle in front. And we have brought it to this level using the procedure which I explained to you. And I think, uh, I won't call it a photo or a photographer's work, but I'll call this as a photo artist work. You have now created something for yourself using the photo which you took, and you have made it into a workable option, a image which can be very easily put on your wall. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something from this. Do understand that... Um, now artificial intelligence is making inroads into Photoshop and, you know, all aspects of our life. And if we don't use it to our advantage, then we will be left out. Nobody wants to watch and have a look at a washed out image with a lot of noise and things like that, saying that I'm a purist and I've, it's right from 
out of the camera, so-called sook, straight out of the camera image. All that is, well, may suit somebody. But what my philosophy is that when I create an image, it should be such that the viewer enjoys seeing it. The normal viewer is not trying to, you know, understand how this was created. What he or she is trying to do is uh, have a look at a good image. And that is what our, I mean, in my way of thinking, outlook has to be. So that's it for this video. Take care and happy learning.